Hola, this is Emilia from SpanishForTeachers.org and today I'm going to show you how to use the TED-Ed flip tool to create lessons. So here I am in ed.ted.com. So once you sign in, you've, you'll find yourself right here. To create your lesson, click on YouTube. Lessons on TED-Ed are created around YouTube videos, so you must choose a video to create your lesson around it. So you can do it um, in two ways. Either type search words like Hispanic culture, for example, and then go through the ones, the videos that are suggested below. But I like to have my video already chosen so what you do is just go to YouTube, click on the URL, copy it, and paste it right here on in the search box and click search. So the video should appear right below and if it is the video you want just click on the title to begin your lesson. Then just begin creating the lesson by clicking on flip this video. So this is a screen that has a lot of stuff, but once you're done with it, your lesson is finalized and created. So let's take it from the top down. Um, these two, two buttons on the top right are to finish the lesson. So preview, you can preview the lesson at any time through any step of the way and to finish is when you're, you know, finished, done. So listed means that anybody who searches for a lesson in Spanish or that has to do with Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which is my lesson about, then my lesson will pop up for them. If you don't want it to be listed on said, then just click on unlisted. I usually like to leave mine listed. I like to share my, my lessons. So allow flips of this lesson if you want other people to use your lesson as a guide and to make their own to create their own flip their own then you just click on yes also ted ed nominates best flips weekly so if you want to um if you want ted to take a look at yours and consider it for best flip then just click on yes as well now let's keep going. This first um, box you see right here, that's going to be the name, name of your lesson. So by default, what you see there is the name of the YouTube video. I usually change it and make sure it is very specific and has to do with the unit or the lesson I'm teaching right now. All right, so that's going to be the name of my lesson. Now we go here to let's begin and we have another box here. This is going to be the description of your lesson. What I like to do for my students is give them the objectives right there. So I always tell them by the end of this lesson you will be able to or you should for example and then I give them a few, three, two, three, or four bullet points. You should be able to, for example, identify, I, oops, identify the cultural setting of the book. And I give them a few more. So once you're done with the description, we go down here to the right and these are the steps of your lesson. The first step is watch the video. So the students will come in and watch the video first. The others are step the other steps think, dig deeper, discuss and finally we'll see them all. They are all optional. So if in one of your lessons you decide not to include the think part which are questions then you just click on exclude 
Some lessons you might you might just want students to discuss. So you can exclude all of them and leave the discuss option, which is a guided discussion. So I'm going to leave all of them so we can talk about them. So think, the think part is questions about the video. So you can add multiple choice questions, which are new now, and open answer questions. So let's create a multiple choice question here. Let's say, um, what is the book based on according to Gabo, for example. I click on next, you can, prov you, can um, uh, you know, put a time there, but I never use it. And then next, you have to write the answers. So, um, let's say, um, a lonely town or the story of a um, man not sure and you have to select the correct answer yourself so let's say that's it you can preview and save there it is and when you're done you just click on save so you have your first answer complete now notice here that now I get this um, this button that says exclude. It's because you can create many questions, but you can, as you see here, you can only have 15. 15, I think, is way too many questions for a lesson. But you can create all of them. You can create as many as you want, and then you can exclude some so that means that students won't be able won't see all of them only the ones you leave um, visible or included this is also a good option when you want to differentiate so you can create as many questions as you want and you can exclude some for example the difficult ones for some students let's create an upper, another question and this one's going to be open and let's say what is the theme of the story? And the only thing you need to do is save because it's open question. So um, here we go. Another again the option to exclude it and everything. So now if you go up here, you can scroll through your questions. So I have this one and I have this one. So as you see, I don't have an option to reorganize them so what you can do is either exclude one or remove it if you don't like it so I'm going to leave those two <clears throat> and continue with the next um, step which is called dig deeper so it, it leaves you up to 5,000 characters to include whatever you want you can inc include links so what I usually do is I use this space either to give them more um, more information about something so if I'm talking about cognates I might give them a list of false cognates here or I might give them a reading over here a short text that includes many um, cognates many true cognates or I use this space to have them take action with the lesson and with what they learned. For example, I used to send them to a third party um, application to discuss, but now you can do it here. However, you can say um, according to the video and to them to your answers to your answers and oh, go to the class voice thread if you want them to practice Spanish and um, discuss what you think 
this story will be about. You can even include use uh, structures such as uh, pienso que, opino que, me parece que, so that they have something else to do and take action and show you that they acquired the objectives and the learning, you, the knowledge you wanted them to. All right, and discuss is a very cool new option where you can create um, a little discussion, threaded discussion. They can come and respond, re respond right here. So I don't have any discussions created for this uh, lesson, so I'll just create a new one. The title will be um, Characters. Characters of this book. And here I can just give them a guided question according to the video. Video. Oops, sorry, it's hard to type and, and record. Um, which kinds of characters will we find and why? So, add the, this, this discussion. You can add, you can add more discussions to it and they will appear separately and students can comment on them, on them separately. I'm not going to add, add any more, but this is how it will look. Save. Finally, this is just a few characters and it's just to wrap up the lesson. So you might want to tell them the final um, aim, the final objective, the conclusion of the lesson as if you were in class. Finally, or you can take them to another uh, resource. Finally, um, or to wrap up, let's read um, a bit about magical realism and then give them a link right there, right here, give them a link. All right, I think I'm done with my lesson, so I'm going to preview it. You can go through all the steps to preview it. So here's my questions, my two questions. Then let's see my dig deeper. It's right there. Next section is my discussion. Here it is. If my students are going to discuss, they click here and they add their opinion. The last step is, and finally, and it's where, oops, I didn't save it, but it's when, where I added my final thought. So here I noticed that my last step did not um, save, so I just click on edit up here. It worked perfectly, because <laughs> I can show you what to do. So I go to my, my and finally, and I add it again. This time I'm just going to scribble there. And then I click on finish. So when I'm done, it takes me to this option where you can edit it again before you send it. You can share it. What I do, of course, with students is just send it via email. So um, I write the emails here separated by commas, and here I tell them this is your Cien Años de Soledad lesson. Please complete it before tomorrow's class, for example, and I send it. And that's it. The next video will be about how to view students' answers and how to um, guide them to um, access your lesson. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.